Hey y'all, so I know you have seen me explore places like Malibu and Marina del Rey, but did you know that there's some hidden gems in the San Fernando Valley? Yes, absolutely. So I am in Rosita right now and I'm going to be exploring Rosita Park. But before I do that, let me give you a little bit of history, okay? So Rosita was established in 1912, but before that, this land, these lands, were inhabited by the Native American Tongva tribe who lived along the LA River. So behind me, you see that river right there is the LA River. It runs for miles and miles and miles and miles. I'm sure you've seen me film at the LA River. Um, I filmed herons at the LA River and a lot of birds come here, you know, because water is a good source. <laughs> a lot of birds do come here for water, food, fish. So yes, they inhabited these lands prior to 1912. So that is a little bit of the tiny history of Rosita. When it was established, it was named Marion. Okay, correct me if I pronounce that wrong because I pronounce everything wrong. <laughs> it was named, but I think somewhere around 1921-ish, they renamed it Rosita. And here's the cool fact about that name. The name Rosita was actually um, a, named after a plant, a fragrant plant. So yes, if you didn't know that, Rosita was named after a fragrant plant. Anyways, so we're going to walk into the park to, you know, kind of see what wildlife we can spot. Let's go. So there are several entrances you can come in through. I came in through the back entrance because I didn't want to park on the street. But, you know, it's safe. They've made, like, parking easy in the area and okay as we walk in you can see the first thing <laughs> somebody then locked their love <laughs> whoever locked your love there i see you <laughs> i hope you guys are still together yeah this could actually be like you know how paris has that bridge this is a bridge it could be actually one of those i mean maybe not a scenic but it could be one of those, I'm not giving ideas, y'all. <laughs> one of those bridges that lock love. All right, so we're walking into the park and then you could tell like the birds love this place. You're gonna find, oh, there goes a swallow. And you're gonna find my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. We're gonna walk towards it. So you see ravens, there he goes, whoa, and away. There are a lot of ravens in this park. So if you are someone that has always wanted to see ravens and you're in California or Southern California, this park is actually a good place to spot ravens. And right there we have just flew away to a black Phoebe. I don't really see black Phoebes much around this area, but you know, migration and summer and weather you'll find different things different season but one thing you will always find here continuously are these cuties over there of the canadian geek okay. all right so we are walking towards the lake so this is what i was talking about it's a hidden gem you know the lake actually is really beautiful it is lawn made so we're going to walk there and see what wildlife we can spot. Hey. And over time, I feel like... Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. I dropped something. So give me a second. I dropped my lens cap. Not good. And of course, I dropped it in the mud. Not cool. Just one muddy spot. Out of all the non-muddy spots is where... My lens cap decides to fall. Okay. Well, at least it's not my lens itself. So, as I was saying, uh, this lake is man-made. It is pretty serene. So, we're going to see what wildlife we can spot here. It's going to be mostly birds. So, we're going to see what birds we can spot. The Canadian geese. Oh, I was talking about the Canadian geese. So, they used to be super aggressive, but not so much anymore. Usually they'll chase you, you know, but now not so much anymore. So that's kind of what we find. I'm going to sit down and then we're just going to 
enjoy this lake together. Then I'll walk around the lake to kind of give you like a little preview of what the lake looks like. Don't run from me. Come on. We're friends. <laughs> we all know what that is, right? They're the, well, they're com common ducks. I pronounce things were common ducks. If you know what kind of duck it is, I'm not going to tell you. Comment below. All right, looks like we have a guest who wants to be interviewed. Hello. Do you want to tell us your name? You came up to me. Let me zoom in a little closer. Are you going to talk to me? What's your name? I mean, you walk up to me and you're just kind of staring like, quack, 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 quack. What's your quack, quack name? <laughs> They're so beautiful. Look at the feathers. Look at the details in the feathers. I'm going to do a little video so you see the details in the feathers. All right. So to show you that the Canadian geese especially, they do breed a lot. Urbanization does not affect them breeding in my own opinion they have found a way to just be in these urban areas and survive you could tell from the, the, that bunch over there you know you can see by age and by size um by size you know the bigger ones are obviously more adult and then the uh, mid middle ones are more teenagers and if you get closer to them like the smaller ones their feathers are you know, not as prominent as the bigger ones. Yeah, but their babies are always so cute. They're teenagers, not so much until they start getting their feathers in. I've seen a few teenagers that look <laughs> questionable. All birds are beautiful. I'm sorry. But yeah, so you see they're like, there is an abundance of Canada geese. I, if I called it Canadian geese, excuse me, but they're called Canada geese the right terminology there are abundance of them in this park especially i mean they're in other parks see you can see them and um my friend is still sitting right there but you can see they're pretty much everywhere and i want to show you something real quick because when i walked in something interesting happened i'm gonna walk to the other side and show it to you uh, give me a second all right, so while my friend watches my camera, <laughs> I'm going to walk over there to show you something that I observed. If you look over there behind me, right there is a water fountain. So when I walked in, I had observed the Canada geese, about four or five of them, <sighs> trying to drink water from that fountain. So I find that interesting, the effects of urbanization on wildlife. I'm going to put this right here. I can talk to you. Uh -huh. It's a little high. <laughs> so we're going to lower it a little bit. All right, good. So yeah, like I was saying, I find it interesting. There are ants here. I find it interesting how animals adapt. And my friend is still there. You want to come say hi? <laughs> no? Okay. How animals adapt to urbanization. Canada geese and especially ravens, like crows, ravens, and squirrels. <laughs> Especially fox squirrels, actually. Fox squirrels are so hardy. They, they're like the roaches of the squirrel world. They can adapt. They're not too smart crossing the street, but they adapt pretty well to urban environments. Like they know how to like be your friend when there's food. They know how to beg for peanuts. Good or bad, I don't want to be like you know judge Tony. But you know the general rule is like wildlife. Like let's say. Oh, wait, that might be happening again. There, here they go. Hold on, let me see if they're going to go towards the fountain. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we get to see them go back to the fountain. Anyways, like I was saying, the squirrels, or just general wildlife, depends on the wildlife. Like, you shouldn't feed things like coyotes, right? Because, you know, they need to be able to survive in the wild. But I think squirrels have gotten to a point where they're like, you know, that pet you can't bring in the house, so they kind of live outside your home in the trees or whatever. So, yeah, you know, Again, like I said, I find it interesting how animals adapt to their environment. They're pretty amazing. So we're going to keep walking. And my friend over here and I, uh, maybe, oh, I was going to give away the, if it was a male or female. 
maybe friend <laughs> is gonna follow me or not let's go all right y'all so before we walk the lake um i want to show you something behind me right there did you see that that is what i think is a brewer's blackbird um those are actually pretty cool but before we walk that way and kind of show you what the lake looks like and how you could just kind of chill i want to show you how many because i keep saying like you know a lot of canadian geese and all that, oh canada geese i just say canadian geese a lot of canada geese a lot of canada geese i just want to show you what i mean by a lot of canada geese i'm gonna walk that way just to kind of show you then we'll come back this way so i can show you um the rest of the, the rest of the park especially the lake because that is why we're here we're here for the wildlife and the lake and if you hear like that noise behind me those are ravens they're in the tree right that tree wait that tree this one <laughs> there um usually a lot of ravens in there um but yeah so let's walk and see um how many canada geese while we're walking count okay i'm gonna walk around them they're gonna you know kind of pull back from me keep that in mind so i'm just gonna keep a respectful distance but try and count how many you spot in one area because they're all over the park but we're just gonna walk the area right in front of me all right yeah so here we go this is um walking where behind me and um all right let's start here you can see some over there to start counting how many do you see how many do you spot I'm gonna go over here the ones in a little corner right there are you counting are you counting there's some over there we already saw these ones that one over there in that corner over there at the squirrel fox squirrel they are so adaptable there's some over there and gosh oh hello friends you see them looking at me like what is wrong with this lady with the camera that two over there well, i can say two i'm not going to tell you how many and all the way to that end you see over there and you're counting <laughs> this is a fun little exercise hello friend we're doing a count of you guys right and they're all looking at me look at the side eye <laughs> i love when they side eye like looking at me like what do you want lady all right so over here and over here again they're kind of used to people oh you want to show off your wings huh yeah they're kind of used to people so you see like they're not really even running away from me and one thing you trust canadian canada geese <laughs> if i say canadian geese i'm gonna have to drop a dollar in the bucket um canada geese to do is fight they like to fight well there's so many of them all right so we have are we still counting yes we are here 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 and Oh, yeah, yeah, I fight. Always fighting. Uh, am I confusing you now? Because I'm kind of moving in a circle. So I'm going to go there over there. Uh, let's see. And, okay, I'm going to get closer to this spot so you kind of see them. And they're here. Okay. Feel free to pause to do your count if you need to. So when I circle back, uh, again, always fighting. When I circle back, you can, all right, recount if that's easier. Let me get behind the tree so we don't miss any. All right, we're going to circle back. And they're looking and following me like, I don't have food for you. Okay. Okay okay all right and then some here and over there see. Oh, here <laughs> and we're walking back towards the lake side eye so tell me 
How many did you count? Give a guesstimate. You don't have to give like the actual number. Give a guesstimate. How many do you think? And that's just on one side of the park. Like we didn't even explore. I'm gonna do like a little 360. We didn't even explore the other side of the park. And there's some more of them there. So let me do a little quick 360. Boom. Boom. More. Bunch in that corner. More. More. And more. And then the two Lone Rangers over there. All right. Let's walk back to the lake. All right, so we still haven't seen them come back to the fountain. I really hope I get to see them do it again before I leave. It was just the most interesting sight. Um, yeah, and fishing is allowed at this park. And look, trash cans, so people don't have to throw their fishing line in the water. Um, <laughs> but do you think they listen? I don't know. All right, so again, I'm going to get a close-up of the man-made lake and tell me what bird you spot? Right here, we'll walk around. It's so far we spot. So, those are some more Canada geese. And let's see, to the right over there, um, where the Canada geese are swimming towards, let me show you a close up um, from my camera. That is the American coot. Uh, I absolutely love those birds. And you're so unique looking. Like, um, they have the little intricate web. Why are you just. Did you see that? Why did you just land on my friend? Like, come out of the water, but don't land on my friend. Why is my friend just being abused? <laughs> okay, that's better. Like, the first one just landed on my friend. Like, what the heck? All right, so I'm um, going to walk that way now. Just a little FYI. One of the hardest things to do um, is, again, when I film, having to carry this around. It's pretty heavy, so you have to forgive me, you know, until I'm, like, top whatever, and I can have some sort of crew <laughs> or somebody to hold the camera for me. It's always hard to carry this heavy lens. And also kind of show you around. So I do, that's why you see a lot of stops. But we're going to get through this day. Oh. It's so easy to get distracted here. Um, hold on. So I've met this man before. I'm going to walk over there. The camera's safe. Oh, a lot of poop. A lot of poop. Poop everywhere. So you got to be careful when you walk. Anyways, so this man comes here and feeds the... Canada geese or the ducks too um, but mostly the Canada geese so this is what I was saying about how they kind of just adapted over time to humans you know look at them they're like hello friend <laughs> I find them so interesting look at they're like we see food you know and they just kind of see not running not being aggressive like they know like, oh, this person feeds us. Again, um, there are some places that don't allow feeding because this is what happens. They breed. Where there's food, they're happy. And look how they follow him. Look. <laughs> He's like the Canada geese whisperer. <laughs> oh, because of bread. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Amazing stuff. All right. Um, oh, look at you, cowbird. Uh, look at that little cowbird over there. All right, so I'm going to walk. I've been saying that. I keep getting distracted. I'm going to walk towards the other side of the park, but I found this interesting to see how they respond to humans that feed them. And they're going to start fighting. Canada geese and fight five and six. See, see? Two seconds there. Oh, he's fighting. All right, we're going to walk that way now. Um, or else we're going to spend this episode filming all Canada geese. Today on Adventures of a Nature Explorer, Wildlife Explorer, Canada Geese. <laughs> All right, so we are doing a quick walk around the lake to see what we're going to spot. Finally! <laughs> Nothing's going to distract me this time, I promise. Okay, 
I'm not promising, but I will try to do the walk around before I get distracted. All right, so um, one thing about this place, one thing about this, one thing about this place is you will find an abundance of poop. Ah, jeez. Oh, look. We have, can you guess what that is? All right, more birds. Um, from blackbirds to cowbirds. Blackbirds, cowbirds. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm going to have to drop my camera for this one. All right, so I had promised not to get distracted, but I just saw a family of ducks, and um, I had to stop and film. So I'm going to show you a little, right there, um, a little birdie, and I want you to tell me what bird you think this is right here. And then these birds, oh look, they are here. <laughs> all right again tony easily distracted all right and these birds over here um i've talked about them on my tiktoks um shorts can you tell me what they are man we're like in um i am not the bird expert by any means i am learning as well like i learn because again i observe them a lot so the ones i tend to observe more than others i know obviously by default or what they are and in there you see that so oh it just went back in the water it was a red ear turtle yeah so they have this little makeshift landing dock or whatever it is what i call it over there and that place tends to attract a lot of comorons sunbathers like comorons oh we have a diver tony stop getting distracted i like that too it attracts a lot of comorons, a lot of seagulls, pretty much sunbathers. Anybody that just kind of wants to chill, not be in the water, they end up sitting right there. So this lake is actually pretty cool. You know, it helps the wildlife and it also helps um, people because when you sit out here, it's pretty serene. Look at it. It's, you know, it's gorgeous. Let me zoom out so you see it. All right, there you go. So I'm zoomed out so you can see how nice, you know, the little chairs or block chairs you can sit on. But you spend an afternoon here. Even though it's hot today, you still feel the breeze. You know, you could just kind of sit, read a book, listen to music. And we have some seagulls on their other side over there. I'm going to keep walking. All right. If you look up there, you will see... Um, some crows in that tree behind that I was showing you behind me earlier. Uh, and then of course the more ducks. Again, it's this place I feel like it's so underrated. Like a lot of birders don't know that this place is like bustling <laughs> with birds. Like, you know, you and then sometimes you come here and then you find like different types of birds that you haven't seen before. Um, not often, um, if you hear that <laughs> noise, those are the blackbirds, the red winged blackbirds. Um, their call is so loud, but anyways, um, yeah, so we're walking, I'm going to keep walking. Like I said, it's a small lake. It's not like a 10 mile walk. Like you can literally walk around the lake in, I don't know, 10 minutes. But, um, oh, look at the little coop babies. Oh, my God. Get out of here. I've never seen their babies before. This is incredible. Okay, this is my first time seeing coop babies. Oh, look how gorgeous they are. Oh, my goodness. Wait. You see what I was saying about this place being so underrated? Like, I kid you not, this is going to be my first time seeing coot babies, and I film birds a lot. <laughs> this is an exciting moment for me because, oh my god, why are they so gorgeous? Oh my goodness.
Oh my God, look at you. You are just amazing. Look at the colors. The thing they grow up to, you know, look like, I mean, they're gorgeous grown up too. Oh, what are you doing in there? Oh my goodness. Look at you. Oh, Lordy, I'm going to come up and get a tiny bit closer now to disturb your space because I get a good shot of you. You're so freaking cute. Oh. All right, I'm annoying, I know, right? <laughs> All right, y'all, so how exciting was that? And then we get to experience it together. Oh, God. Okay, so I get overly excited. You have to excuse me. But, yeah, like, I've never, I see coots every time. But I've never seen their babies before, and we got to see coot babies together. That was pretty exciting. Anyways, I'm going to keep walking. We're almost at the other side it's a short walk from here let's see maybe we'll spot more babies we've seen coot babies we've seen um ducks ducklings and there's a cormorant right there i don't know if you can see it camera footage coming but yeah there's a cormorant right there maybe we'll get lucky and see a cormorant fishing <laughs> all right so um walk in the rest of the park see what else we see Ah, uh, there goes a squirrel and a pigeon. All right, so I rarely see pigeons just kind of chilling on the tree like that, not moving, but like at an angle. And squirrels, of course, they're always going to do what they do, hide nuts. So, you know, squirrels don't always remember where they hid their nuts. It's like they just kind of guess like, okay, I think I must have hidden it here. They're not always 100% accurate but look how cute they are when they do it though <laughs> all right so we're gonna keep moving unless we see more interesting it never gets old for me like nothing like super exciting like like an osprey you know diving has to happen for me to enjoy just kind of being out here something as simple as a squirrel hiding it's Peanuts is, or whatever, acorn, whatever nuts it finds is exciting for me. Just another kind of view of the park before I walk across. And again, urban life, the buildings around it, it is what it is. All right. I like that little... Um, makeshift I again <laughs> um planted area over there so the cool thing is the that was planted by the high schoolers in the school nearby um the science like oh my goodness did you just see that oh darn it <laughs> I am zoomed too far away so that's a cormoran and it just caught fish but of course Guess who's zooming too far away where you couldn't see it? And my, uh, my camera is on my shoulder, so I missed that completely. Uh, but, you know, we saw it still, right? It might not have been zoomed in, but it, we kind of saw it. So that is, that's the tail end of it. That is where we started. We walk around this way. A lot of the comorons hang around here because, again, fishing is allowed and there seems to be a lot of trout. Um, trout was introduced to this lake. I'm not sure when, but there's trout in these waters. And yeah, so what I'm going to do, let's do a little trivia. What birds did we see? Number one question, comment below. And what did you learn? What did you learn today about the lake at Reseda Park? All right, so I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. This was fun. I really enjoyed myself, and I hope you did too. So this is the hitting, one of the many hitting gems. I'm going to show you more in the San Fernando Valley. Again, Malibu's fun. Marina Del Rey is fun. The West Side is fun. But there are actually nice parts that you can chill out in in the San Fernando Valley. We're not going to talk about concrete and asphalt and how much heat it creates. Let's enjoy the greenery and the fact that the wildlife in this park, I'll call them urban wildlife, they can actually thrive. I don't see a lot of birders here. I, I, I don't. And I think, again, it's because they don't know 
how much you can find here. Right? Most people go to like the reserve, the wildlife basin, because again, you'll find stuff. But I've seen herons here. I've seen all sorts. You see comorons. We saw baby coots. <laughs> baby coots. We saw baby coots. Oh my god. Ah. All right. So <laughs> again, stay tuned for some of the footage that I captured at the end of this video. I'm going to show you if you enjoyed my this walk with me do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like and especially if you want me to continue doing this i'm gonna continue doing this regardless <laughs> let me not blackmail you to like buying my art if you enjoy the art that i create taking pictures of wildlife feel free to hop into my store and support and buy a piece hang a piece if buy a coot because we experienced it together <laughs> well don't buy a coot buy a picture of a coot <laughs> because we experienced it together all right, that is going to be it. Till next time. Bye, y'all. And don't forget, stay tuned for the footage. <laughs>